towards our next panel. It's a panel for discussion. The topic is HR Transformation 2023, Game Changing Trends in HR Technology. For this, please put your hands together. I would like to call on stage Mr. Rajesh Tara, Senior VP HR from Usha International. <laughs> Mr. Rajendra Matharu, Head HR from DCM Shiram. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Rajendra? Ms. Neha Mayanka, Director of Human Resources from AMPL. Mr. Yash Singh, Head HR from Ebro India. Can we have a huge round of applause for all of them? Last but not the least, we have our moderator. Please put your hands together for Mr. Sachin Deesa, India Center of Excellence Operations Leader from Top Source Worldwide. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Sachin? So, sir, it's time to fly. You're the captain. Thank you so much. Hello. Very good afternoon to everyone. And first of all, I want to thank Ashish, because he's made uh, my session more interesting. He's woken all of you up. <laughs> so uh, we, are, uh, we are here today uh, to talk about uh, technology. We've been hearing a lot about technology since morning, and the technology, how it impacts all the aspects in, in, in HR. I would want to quote uh, Mr. Godfrey Reggio here. He says that it's not what we use technology, we live technology. Now, everything that you do today, right from uh, the way you wake up in the morning, to how you commute to work, to how you order food, to even nowadays to finding your own soulmates, all of this is driven by technology nowadays. So it's not surprising that uh, the HR uh, rather, technology has impacted everything that we are doing in our HR sections as well. So today we are here to talk about game-changing trends in, in HR technology. In today's panel discussion, we will discuss how latest HR technologies can help companies improve productivity, engagement, efficiency, as well as address all the workforce challenges. Towards the end of the section, we, with time permitting, we will also take some questions from uh, all the, the audience. So let me introduce uh, our uh, panelists today. We have uh, Mr. Rajesh Tara, who's sitting on my left here. Uh, he is the Vice President uh, HR at Usha International. I have uh, Mr. Rajinder Matharu. Uh, Rajinder is the Vice President HR at uh, DCM Sri Ram Sugars. Then I have uh, Neha. Uh, welcome, Neha. Neha is the Director Human Resources at Ameriprise India. Uh, and Mr. Yashpal Singh, who is the Head HR at Ebro India. Uh, you, you are getting, we have been fortunate to uh, listen in to Mr. Yashpal uh, again so, so the second time today. I've got a veteran HR group here. So I, I do hope that uh, uh, we'll carry a lot of uh, experience back at the end of 40 minutes from now. So without further ado, let me ask uh, my first question. So let me kick off this conversation by the first question to, to Rajesh. So in the last couple of years, Rajesh, uh, with this shift that we are seeing uh, to digital communication and collaboration, all this work from home era, what has been the most noticeable change that you've seen in HR technologies? Thanks, uh, Sachin. I think my job has been, uh, it has become very difficult. One, the speaker before me had a very high energy presentation. Two, Sachin accused me of being a part of veteran group, which I am not. I thought I am still young, but I don't know why he has used the word veteran for me. So all the more my job becomes difficult and I don't know how to start, but uh, 
if you guys are interested to listen to our uh, bakwas for next 15 20 minutes <laughs> so and if you want something else we can go there but yes if you want us to talk about technology a boring subject for all of us after a day long so can i have a huge round of applause so that at least we can uh, get awakened from our sleep yeah that's it that's it that's what i wanted the energy to be there in the room okay and uh, sachin has talked about uh, work from home era and how technologies uh, and which technologies have changed our lives frankly speaking there were only two technologies technology one while shifting immediately from the day of lockdown to our computers which are our friends for next one year or so the technology which worked there was have a good crisp white shirt on top and underneath you can be in your shorts that era taught us that you can remain in your slippers your big car will remain standing outside your house without being used your expensive watch will be remaining in your drawer your expenses ties and shoes and belts everything remain inside you were in your slippers shorts and one t-shirt or one shirt what second thing work from home taught us was technology shifting to technology the students started shifting to online classes we started to having meetings online and all interactions online i think zoom and paytm and google and meets and all that including ms teams frankly speaking sachin my most uh, revealing point was exploring ms teams most of us use only for or use it only for meetings it has a whole plethora of uh, employee engagement and your surveys and everything is there in ms uh, teams so that is what it changed our lives in uh, during the work from home and then what changed was that they started looking for uh, software to start induction online to start joining formalities online leave aside interviews and all that so these were the few technologies which came handy during the work from home i hope i have answered your question well thank you thank you rajesh it it does mean that uh, it's kind of touched every single aspect of the employee journey and uh, you rightly said all our days start with meetings in teams or zoom and that's where we end our day as well um, so let me let me uh, move to the next question uh, so i want to ask uh, yash how can hr technology be leveraged to create digital headquarters to improve hr productivity good afternoon uh, i believe that first step towards uh, leveraging the hr technology is hr professional has to understand the technology first because hr is never considered to be a hr friendly you know profession so if you understand a bit of algorithms a bit of you know it's it's not only just outlook or excel or word you know it's more than that so if we understand that what will happen and what are the various challenges and what are the various disadvantages to that first of all challenge mm, suppose you know uh, hr professional always thinks that you know when they you know shift towards technology if they go for ai or ml what will happen the decision making power will go to computers instead of hrs and uh, that is the kind of mindset and that is the kind of you know a bit of you know roadblock i would say and who will decide the promotions computer will decide the promotions who will decide who is going to resign computer will say, tell you who will tell that you know what to do if you want to retain this person computer will tell you so you know this is a bit of uh, you know mindset which uh, hr professionals have to come out of it and there are advantages also which are bigger than this one big very big advantage of it is like you know if the most important the core aspects of hr is 
your HR operations, be it your attendance, your time office, your leave records, and everything. So there is a study which happened in India, and uh, the one consulting company, they did this study, and they found that there is a mistake of around 1% of the uh, payroll cost, which happens to the good companies who are using the digitalization, who uses the technology for payroll and time office. And they, they're, if they are not using it nicely, if they are not using it appropriately, what is happening? The normal companies, they are wasting around 4% of their payroll cost. So what happens that you can reduce or you can kind of, you know, check this, these kind of leakages which can happen in the HR operations. And when HR operations are stabilized, HR professional, they can shift their, you know, time and efforts towards strategic things, and HR can transform uh, their, you know, uh, role. Another very big advantage which I feel is very important for the HR fraternity and I would say uh, the HR function is, uh, the legacy is, historically, the legacy is this that, you know, like, uh, HR is a traditional function, they are a supportive function, uh, people, you know, if they are, find, they are not finding any other job, they can shift to HR profession. So, you know, of course, the growth depends upon the kind of HR skill set they have. But with the technology in use nowadays, HR profession is becoming more of a professional service rather than a journalist service, journalist role. So we are shifting from journalist to a professional thing, a super specialization in which you need some skill set to be a good HR professional. So that is something which is, I, I believe this is a very big um, advantage to technology, uh, if you use the technology in today's uh, HR function. Uh, so uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, use, if technology can be used in a, in, a, in a proper way, like, you know, if we, our mindset is uh, positive for technology, and we can we can use it for the uh, for the benefit of the business. We can really impact the EBITDA, the net margin of the organization. And if we can use, as I said in my previous session, that you know, if we can use 70 percent, at least 70 percent of our time towards strategic things and impacting the business results, then I think HR as a function can grow a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. I wanted to add something. You sure. know. Just a perspective, you should not look at digital headquarters as something which is, you know, in physical form. And uh, please don't see it as even fixed. To me, a digital headquarter is, you know, a group of people working as remote as in different parts of the world, connected to a common purpose, working on a common and a strong idea. They come together, deliver, move on to the next idea. So the headquarter is just to give a perspective, perspective is not a physical space, is not a fixed space. It will keep on shifting, more driven by the requirements of the consumer of the business. Well, well said, Rajinder. In fact, uh, digital itself will indicate uh, it is uh, not centralized or uh, it's not physically available in one place, but it's available anywhere that you go. So that's, that's a very well, well said point there. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, topic and uh, when you talk about technology nowadays, one of the biggest buzzwords right now is about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I want to ask Rajinder, what do you think is the role of uh, artificial intelligence and the related technologies in, the, uh, in changing the face of HR? I think my belief has been that uh, you know, uh, technology is not an end in itself. Uh, it should be seen as an enabler. Enabler for any business function, including HR. I think the problem comes, you know, when you see uh, adoption of a technology as an end in itself. You know, and I'm sure all of us over here, we would have, uh, you know, used technology which was catalyzed by the pandemic, you know, whether it was chatbots in HR or, you know, uh, for uh, COVID management, we had a lot of uh, AI-based, uh, you know, recruitment solutions. I don't want to name, uh, you know, uh, uh, organizations. But these sort of technologies have become the norm of the day. And again, you know, the only scent of caution that I have is please treat them as an enabler. The essence of human judgment. They're only facilitating your decision making. 
They're only facilitating your decision making. And just, and there's a thin line difference. And one has to be, as HR professionals, professionals be very mindful. Ki am I using it, you know, just as an enabler, or I'm becoming solely dependent on it? I think that's the critical judgment that HR professionals need to make. Thank you, Rajinder. It was uh, very insightful. It's, it's always important to know and differentiate between a machine and a human being. Um, and we have to, that's what I think keeps us relevant, is what I feel. Great. Moving on, uh, every organization is looking to move towards digital digitization and transformation. But there are always gaps between plans and implementation. It's a very common practice uh, and a common issues that we've seen uh, across. So I want to ask Rajesh, uh, what are the key drivers you feel are for a successful HR digitization program? Uh, I will not talk theory. I would like to talk practically what has been my experience. So based on my experience, I will try to reply to this question. And perhaps it can be useful for the audience here. Based on my experience, I think there are four critical drivers for a successful digitization process in any company. At least it worked very beautifully in my company. I think the very first driver is process orientation or process adherence. When I say process, or uh, process orientation, that means as HR, we are all HR professionals. And if we don't follow a strategic a well-defined structured process, your digitization is not going to succeed. So first is, in a very common man's language, when you want to start a kitchen garden in your home, what do you do? The first step is to prepare the soil. So I call it preparing the soil. The digitization, who are your customers? For your customers, the need has to come from there, or as an HR professional, you have to make that need felt. My very favorite uh, phrase, which I learned at the early years of career was, engineering by consent. So I have to engineer that consent. My customers must feel that need, that yes, I need this digitization. So that is preparing this soil. Once you have prepared the soil and both the parties, that means you and your customers are on the same page, then comes a very important landmark. Here is it. In HR, Parles will say, every person who resigns and goes away, there's an opportunity for an HR to speak to his or her boss and understand, boss, you dear, do you really require a replacement for this position or this role can be given to somebody else? And it's a very important discussion. So this is, similarly, this is a very important uh, milestone, as is and to be. This is important area. Please relook at your what you are digitizing, what are your as is processes, involve stakeholders, and start a process of to be. Because when I'm trying to digitize, there's an opportunity to change the things, change it for the good. So please prepare a to be document in consultation with everybody. Third is, don't leave it to only IT people to configure and roll it out. Create a marketing campaign. Come on, HR guys, we are all, we are all in one. We know what marketing is. Create a marketing, we are poor in marketing. Create a marketing campaign and start a, I would say, a movement within your organization. Look, this is what is coming, create a euphoria. Once people are convinced, because these days marketing, everything is marketing. So you have to create that euphoria. After you have done this, that one second driver would be never ever take any initiative, whether digitization or any initiative as HR initiative. The moment it becomes HR initiative, the monkey is on your shoulder. Please go back and read that one minute manager by Kenneth Blanchard. Don't let the monkey be on your shoulder. It is people's initiative, you are facilitating it. The moment it becomes HR initiative, then it is your problem to drive it. And then other people are there just to give you marks, fail or pass. Try to involve as many people from cross-functional to be on the part of that project 
to drive that project, then it becomes people's initiative and you become the facilitator, you become the change agent. Third is user training and training. People who have to use it. Please give them proper training. That is a third driver for the success. If you don't give them proper training, people will falter. And don't be under a misconception that whatever amount of training you give to people, will they be able to use it? Perhaps not. So the fourth successful driver or driver for success is hand-holding. Even after you have rolled out, even after you have rolled out the training, even after you have completed the training, please sit with them, handhold them for at least few months or if it is annual performance appraisal for two years, only then it will succeed. This is based on my experience. Thank you. What a wonderful insight. One quick round of applause, please, for Rajesh. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, uh, I think it's a whole uh, management lesson that we just learned right now about change management. Excellent. So now let's move on to the next one. Um, I want to move to Nehar to you right now. And I want to ask you how technology can help in areas right from recruiting to payroll, employee engagement, uh, from a view to improve the sales service to employees and therefore impacting their productivity. Thanks, Sachin, for the question. Uh, the way I look at it, technology has been an integral part of various HR functions from early on. I mean, if we, uh, I don't know, people from my generation would remember, Nokri and Monster used to be our go-to uh, portals when we were looking for a job change, right, Sachin? So from a recruitment standpoint, we're not new to technology or any other service function for that matter. SAP and uh, other HRMS tools have been in existence for a long, long time. What we've seen more in the last few years, last decade or so, if I can be more precise, is uh, the various advancements in technology and how these advancements have led to uh, enhancements in experiences, either on the sides of clients or for uh, candidates, for employees. Um, to name a few, if you talk about recruitment tools, the kind of tools that you have now in place, the kind of applications that now you have in place, uh, we at Ameriprise, we're using a tool uh, which helps us make our job descriptions more inclusive in its language. So you put your job description into it and it actually throws up suggestions which can make you uh, keep the language more inclusive, uh, make it such that it becomes more meaningful for the candidate. So that's the kind of aid and assistance that you can get through these applications these days. There's another application that helps us be more engaged with our candidates. It's a CRM tool which uh, integrates very well with our HRMS tool, which is Workday. I think Workday is something which most of us are most familiar with as an HRMS tool. Um, and that's something which is embedded into Workday, and that helps us engage with our candidates with a lot of events that we may be coming up with. Uh, there's an application tracking system which is now in place. Earlier, we used to have bundles and bundles of CVs that HR professionals would sift through and uh, you would keep a track of those in case you had to come back to a role uh, that you needed to fill later on. So gone are the days when paper used to be the most frequently viewed uh, site in any HR uh, cabin or uh, workspace. The sleek computer has taken up its place in, instead and uh, the applications and tools that we now have into our systems have enabled and made our lives much more easier to talk about it. Uh, some of the other areas of HR that technology has uh, impacted in a big way, training is another one that I'd like to talk about. So if you look at the entire employee life cycle, right from the stage of recruitment, the moment when a person gets onboarded, there are so many tools that we now have in place which help us integrate a new joiner into our atmosphere, into our ecosphere, much more seamlessly than it was before. You needed a lot of human intervention to get a person onboarded seamlessly into your organization. Now a lot of tools enable you to do that much more effortlessly and in a more impactful way, right? Even at Ameriprise, we have a well-defined ecosystem which is called Ameriprise University, wherein we have a plethora of training modules, uh, right from mini capsules to instructor-led systems. And uh, people can actually register for these trainings it helps people to go for these trainings in a self-paced manner. It enables us to 
encourage an environment of training on demand instead of a training being pushed out to everybody. I mean, what may be your training need may not be my training need, right? So what a system or an eco uh, system like this enables us to do is cater to different needs of different individuals. Each one has a different development need, right? And you can customize your training programs to cater to those solutions. Uh, engagement, again, is a very interesting um, topic that, and, and very close to my heart as well. We have an AI-enabled chatbot in place which helps us connect with people through different stages of their life cycle, right from the time when a person joins uh, to when he or she has completed 15 days, 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, to a year uh, or so. Um, in addition to this, there is, again, a third-party vendor who also uh, drives our engagement survey, which is annual in its nature. So the AI chatbot that we have in place uh, enables us to be get a more real-time feedback on what's playing on people's mind. Uh, it also acts as a lead indicator. We've done a lot of simulation to figure out that what we've seen through uh, the results of our local AI chatbot reflects most often than not into our annual engagement survey as well. So if there are any issues that we come to know through uh, know of through the chatbot, we're able to course correct. We're able to reach out to specific individuals and help them with the issues that they're facing, which they've shared a feedback around. So that's the beauty of technology that helps you stay connected with your people at every stage of their employee life cycle. PMS is again another such sub HR process and uh, a lot of us, um, I'm sure each one of us is an HR professional in our own rights. We've come a long way in terms of managing those paper-led uh, evaluation uh, to a digitally-driven performance management system, right? So technology has touched us in almost every sphere of our life. What it has done is it's simplified, it's made our lives more efficient, it's enhanced the productivity of HR professionals, while in turn also enhancing the experience of the employees, of the candidates, generating values for the client, Summing it up, that's how we've seen the digital boom impact all of us in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you, thank you, Neha. And uh, whilst we are there, uh, can I can I also ask uh, uh, Rajinder uh, about how do you leverage technology to transform employee experiences to support uh, business objectives? I think some of it uh, Neha has already covered. If you can share some of your views on that, I think. Uh Neha has covered most of it. Uh, the employee experience really starts, you know, when you plan a first interaction prior to, you know, uh, a prospective uh, candidate. So, you know, uh, that's on the starting part. And I think well begun is half done. And, you know, uh, we have seen what an off awful experience we create when we call candidates. We have the best of technology, but we made them wait for, uh, made them wait for hours. And I think I can tell you most of the HR professionals are guilty of it. We can blame it on a business manager or a line manager, but I think HR needs to put its foot down. That's with respect to experience. And coming to learning, I think all of us, you know, in our organizations have some learning platform or the other. And I can tell you in the last two years, you know, uh, these learning platforms has, have actually improved by the hour, not even by the day. Any learning platform, what they offered two years back, three years back, and the same learning platform, the offerings that you see today, you know, they are using virtual reality, they are using journey-based learning, they are using effectiveness tools, it is only getting better. But I think the, you have to appreciate that the HR role is again changing. The HR manager's role is changing. Your job is not to stand in the queue and deliver training, which traditionally we have done. You have to view, view yourself as a departmental store. I have a soap, I have a tissue, I have spices, I have vegetables, everything. My shop is open 24 by 7. Please come, pick what you like, and learn on the go. Take your product, take your service on the go. The HR role is to enable that environment and create that ecosystem. And, you know, 
it's really uh, funny that HR is expected to chase a dashboard as to what's the percentage adoption. Sorry, raise your hand. I have created an ecosystem. At the end of it, you are responsible for your own careers. I can facilitate. I, I will not create your career for you. And I think that's, again, a mindset shift we as HR professionals need to build in ourselves. Then we go in ahead and create that ecosystem. Otherwise, we will end up chasing our tail with no results. Thank you, Rajinder, for, for those very valuable insights. Uh, I'm going to turn to Yash. Uh, we're talking about the planning for this, and we've, we've had a fantastic uh, update earlier uh, from Rajesh around that. What I'd like to ask you is, to, when you plan for this HR technology, are you planning for the employee workforce to be offline, that is work from home, or is it uh, uh, a hybrid situation that you consider? Being a manufacturing setup, we have to be work from office only, work from factory. So we can't go for work from home. It is very rarely 5% of our staff, uh, including managers, they can work from home. Otherwise, we have to do it. Even in the COVID time, just only for 15 days, we were uh, working from home. And, uh, you know, like still some, uh, you know, uh, after 15 days, we started with 30% of our staff to come in the factory. And then we took the permission from the administration. So, you know, being a manufacturing setup, we, we can't uh, go for work from home. Excellent. And uh, since uh, there are three representatives from manufacturing, I think all of them are going to say the same thing. Uh, offline work is what uh, they, they are working. So I'm going to come to you, Neha, and ask you, when you're planning this HR technologies, are you, what are you thinking? Uh, work from office, work from home, or hybrid? Uh, so Sachin, we are a kind of setup wherein hybrid is working really well for us. Um, and I think that's the way it's going to go for some more time. And as of now, no plans to come back to work complete five days. Uh, ours is a global capability center which supports the mothership across the globe. And uh, we're working three days from office, two days home, and that's working beautifully well for us. People are happy to come back to office, and that's something which we're grateful for. Um, the kind of culture that is there in the organization, people look forward to meeting their team members in person, and that's the reason why probably hybrid has worked very well for us. And, and, it's and you're using to technology to drive any of that culture initiatives? Uh, so now that we're back in office, Sachin, it's a mix of both. Um, it's been very interesting through the COVID times when we were all working virtual. A lot of our engagement initiatives happened virtually as well. Uh, to name a few, we had a talent show that happened completely virtually, which probably pre-COVID nobody would have imagined. And the kind of props people used from their uh, homes participating in that talent show was, um, uh, I mean, amazing the kind of creativity people put into it. Uh, we had a dance competition, dance off, wherein people were sitting and they were dancing. So the, the, the movements were just half upwards. Uh, while people were sitting. There was a fashion show that was organized all virtual. So I think technology has enabled us to be able to uh, engage with our people through the COVID times as well. Now we're using a mix of both. Now that we're back in office, some of these events are happening more in person, uh, while of course we continue to leverage technology for some of the other participative events, uh, which could be online. Excellent, excellent. I think it's uh, technology helps you to uh, coordinate but the collaboration actually happens more in person. I think I just want to add that even in manufacturing, you know, though the preferred mode remains to work, uh, you know, uh, from the workspace, from office, but at least the thinking, I think we have become a little more open-minded. You know, earlier, if an employee asked us, you know, that I work from home, we would say, you know, take off, chutti lelo, ghar baito. But now, you know, we know that this model works. So, you know, uh, both the manager as well as the employee are to that extent on a more happy wicket, on a happier platform. You know, that's okay, there is a situation and this model can also work. So to that extent, to add to Yash's, uh, Yash's uh, point, even the manufacturing sector has opened up and we are perfectly fine uh, with these kind of uh, adjustments. And thank you, thank you, uh, Jinder. Just. Just to add on to that very quickly, what tools do you think are 
being used by your company right now to enable this work from home in a manufacturing setup? If you can just name one or two. It will be unfair if I name one or two, but I think everyone over here, the tools are common. The, you know, the suites, the office suites are common. You know, they go by the same name. And you have multiple options. And uh, it's not that, you know, uh, one company works with one option. I get an invite. I go to another platform. So I'm using all the platforms. You name it. Probably you'll see it on my laptop screen. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rajinder. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, just a time check uh, on this. It's still down. That's OK. So I'm going to go for one last question to the panel before we head back uh, to the audience for questions from your side. Uh, so this is a question to everyone on this panel is, uh, what is going to be the biggest game-changing trend in HR during this year, 2023? So let's start on my right with the ladies first. So Neha. Uh, Sachin, I'll probably not share any one trend because for me, an HR trend gets defined by the talent pool that you are uh, working with. and. If you look at the talent pool that forms most of our workforce, it's interesting to note how the workforce mix has shifted heavily towards Gen Zs, millennials. I know I was part of a few earlier sessions today as well, and we spoke a lot about the generational mix, right? I was going through one of the studies sometime back and uh, where I read that by about 2025, almost one third of the world population would be Gen Zs, right? And uh, close to about 27% population of the OECD countries, uh, the, the workforce of the OECD countries, in fact, would be Gen Zs. In, in fact, in our organization as well, roughly about 95 to 96% of the workforce is comprised of uh, millennials and Gen Zs. And, and this generation thinks very differently about things. It looks at working with organizations and not working for organizations. So that's the kind of value system that it brings to the workplace. So, as HR professionals, it makes our role even more interesting and more challenging to cater to solutions or to cater to the generation that we're working with in terms of making our solutions more inclusive while retaining that flexibility. So when you're talking about benefits, for example, now you can't have a certain set of benefits and expect everybody will derive value out of it, right? You'll have to cater to a diverse workforce with a set of benefits, wherein some benefits have an appeal for a certain segment of your people, while people still have an option to go for another set of benefits, which they derive more value out of, right? So again, that was just an example that I gave. There are many other aspects that we are now uh, kind of looking at with this interesting generational mix at play and the dynamics that we are now struggling with as HR professionals. So being strategic partners, to the business leaders, what we need to focus on is building our businesses which are more equitable, more sustainable, have these principles inherently inbuilt into the ecosystem which caters to a diverse workforce. So that's how I would probably want to summarize it. Um, and happy to invite thoughts from others. Great, thank you, Neha. Rajinder, what, any views? You know, just to add to Neha's point, uh, I think in the last two, three years, you know, uh, we have captured the digital or the virtual world quite effectively in the workplace. And I think uh, everybody's in all the organizations, the journey has been more or less the same. But, you know, uh, for me, if you ask me for the next one, two, three years, the priority is, you know, uh, we have got so tuned to doing everything so virtually. I think we are losing that aspect of relationships and human touch in the workplace. And I think it would do good for the business, for the HR community to try to create that feeling, that empathy, that environment in the workplace that somebody cares for me. You know, while again, uh, you know, I am, I believe uh, I have a strong school of thought that technology is only an enabler. Let's bring our focus back on the relationships and the human touch aspect of it. Personally for me, that's going to be the focus for the next one or two years. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks so much. Now, Rajesh, your views, please. Okay. Uh, I would uh, not like to predict uh, what is going to be the trend in the next one year or so. 
but i would like to urge each one of you to be the trend setter and once you walk out of this room today please resolve to be a trend setter and why i'm saying so i'll just take two minutes one is the word transformation which this panel is discussing about so transformation is not change transformation is transcending into a new form so as hr professionals we need to transform ourselves to a new form let us forget and i'm underlining the word forget employee experience i think that is the phrase or the verb of the past in the new world the new catch word is customer experience we have been reading this and saying this for years together employees are my customers let's forget employee experience let's say customer experience and that is going to be the trend start treating your employees as customers and i there are two aspects to it i am a difficult customer the moment i want to walk into a showroom whether to buy a popcorn or to buy a shirt for myself if in first 30 seconds i am not be contending to i walk out of that showroom please treat your employees if they walk into your hr if they call you first two rings the call has to be answered by anybody if somebody is walking into your department he or she has to be attended to you have to give them a customer experience they are your customers and second is we are sitting here for talking of technology each one of you sitting in this room including me and my all employees 99.99% people are on amazon buying things left right center people are ordering on zomato flipkart and what not blink it 10 minutes delivery that employee is my enlightened customer the hr services have to cater to him like blink it in my my team is sitting here they are working on a chatbot where with my voice command my employee will say come on what is my leave entitlement and the genie will type it out that this is your leave entitlement okay i am unwell today can you apply cl for me the chatbot bloody well applies the cl and then the chatbot should ask me boss if you have three meetings lined up should i send a mail to all these three that the meeting is cancelled today i need that kind of chatbot i have made my life of my people miserable they are fighting with the vendors and before i conclude one piece of advice don't ever fall into the trap of it people they will give you all the reasons ke saab ye nahi ho sakta hai the workflow in pms workflow will allow you only one reviewer and one appraiser i said it's a matrix organization i want this guy to be reviewed by three people you bloody do your job technology should not hamper your processes so be the trend setter that's my thing thank you thank you rajesh again for a very insightful answer there yes your take on the biggest so, game changing uh, trend i would like to focus and uh, you know my i strongly believe that you know uh, all the hr processes or uh, be it time of is or attendance leave records or the the processes in which we don't need that much human touch that has to be you know technology dr driven rest all the things like employee engagement for that matter i believe that you know all things in which we need uh, empathy as rajender said so those activities those functions of hr should be uh, without technology and that should be in person in person and that should be there should be a you know human touch in that and only then i i think the kind of culture which we want to build for the indian organizations that will be uh, developed thank you thank thank you yash so with this we uh, finish the questions with the panelists here so uh, i think just a couple of minutes left so probably just one two questions yeah so from yeah we've got 3 minutes so any any questions from the audience yeah can can someone give the mic to the lady there right in front of the camera
Thank you. Um, I would start by saying what a veteran group, and uh, including you, Mr. Rajesh. I think it was uh, so insightful to hear all of you and your Round of voice. applause, please. <laughs> Very rightly said. So uh, my question is, uh, I mean, I would like to know uh, what is one best practice that you uh, have implemented in your organization by virtue of implementing an HR technology or analytics uh, in your organizations in the past one year, maybe? Thank you. Who wants to take this question? Uh, it's very difficult to choose anyone, but I'll probably take a stab at it. I'm sure the others will be happy to add as well. Uh, and it's not purely an HR best practice. It's a, uh, it's a technology-driven initiative, which, of course, has worked well for us in HR as well. Uh, so we have an incubation center or a, a team that focuses on intelligent automation. It's an enterprise-wide uh, team which has a mandate to drive efficiencies, identify where there are opportunities to drive a lot of efficiencies across different business units. And HR has been a benefactor or a beneficiary of that as well. Uh, there's something called a predictive modeling that we're working in partnership with the team on. And uh, the AI chatbot that I earlier spoke about is one such area where we're in the process of implementing it. We've seen success out of it in another area. So there's an advisor group that we um, tested it out on by um, applying the model to see which advisors are most likely to stay with us and which are likely to exit in a shorter period of time. And uh, that's exactly what we're trying to build into our AI chatbot uh, results uh, by kind of applying to see which employees are most likely to get more disengaged or uh, exit the system in, over a period of time and start taking proactive measures to engage with that set of employees and uh, take corrective measures. So uh, really two things. One is uh, a chatbot-based uh, employee experience, you know, uh, periodic, coming with insights, uh, throwing up insights so that I can actually focus my time on taking corrective actions or improvement actions, one. Secondly, you know, as uh, coming from the manufacturing sector where we have large workforces, we have a, a, a system whereby, you know, we didn't want employees to come into a close proximity with each other during the pandemic, and we still maintain that. And so therefore, sitting in my office, my HR head in the unit, gets an alert when two people are getting uh, into a distance which is unsafe. You know, you call it tracking, but I say it's important for your well-being and welfare. So these are, I think, two very exciting things uh, which we have done in the last one or two years, and they seem to be working very well for us. Thank you, Rajinder. I think uh, that technology will be required in a lot more organizations than yours. Uh, any, any other questions? I Can think this is going to be the last question and thereafter because we are short of time, the next panel members are waiting. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. My name is Ayan and I represent uh, Ameriprise. My question is with the emergence of uh, artificial intelligence, especially artificial intelligence open source like uh, chat GPT, how do you envision the uh, future role for HR professionals? How do you think it is emerging? It's already emerging and what's the future likely to be? I think we'll have more quality time at our disposal to do a good job. <laughs> because a lot of the work will be done by chat GPT. You know, yesterday, in fact, I was working on it. I wanted to create a, a JD. I thought, you know, I could do it in half an hour's time and then give my quality inputs rather than spend two or three hours, you know, actually creating a, a, a JD. So I think the new technology is going to give me more time to be able to use my experience, my judgment, to deliver a better quality of product or services. And I'm, believe me, I'm really charged about you know these new uh, evolutions in the technological space. Yes, yes. I would add to Rajendra that uh, you know uh, earlier we used to invest our time in gathering the data and then you know kind of compiling it, but now the data is automatically gathered and we can use our time for strategy for. Uh, 
you know, business impact. So there is an opportunity to, for HR professionals. They can use their time, most of the time, for uh, business impact and strategy. And uh, that is automatically done. Thank you so much to all the members. So let's what? proceed for our... Uh, so let's proceed for our felicitation. To felicitate all the panel members, I would like to call on stage. Please put your hands together for Mr. Sanjay Maurya, CEO and founder of Origin Blue. Can we have a huge round of applause for him? Now, please put your hands together for Mr. Rajesh Tara. Please come here, sir. We welcome you all. Mr. Rajendra Matharu. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Rajendra? Ms. Neha Mayanka. Mr. Yash Singh. Let's give them a huge round of applause, everyone. And last but not the least, our moderator, please put your hands together for Mr. Sachin Deesaw. 